Hello, lovelies. I am, uh, <laughs> oh, Instagram live. It's one of those things where I spend a lot of time just staring, just staring at it, having feelings about whether I'm capable of allowing someone else to join the conversation without openly screwing it up. Oh my gosh, Mari, you made me feel like I'm a pro because there you were and you're going to appear and I look like a technological genius. <laughs> okay. I have Did to say I'm like so psyched every time it works. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. This is why I'm not a software engineer. It took me like five minutes to figure out. <laughs> there was one time when I was just like staring at it, mashing the button for like five minutes while people super kind. They were like, Hey, just press this button. <laughs> People are so good. We're so good at so many things and so bad at so many other things. It's okay. It works out. It's so true. Do you mind if I awkwardly talk about you in the third person about how much I love you while people join? Because it is. Oh my gosh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> well, this is the endlessly delightful Mari Andrew. It, she is, you are, I'm just gonna, is an artist, a writer, New York City, and I hope that you have seen her unbelievably relatable and gorgeous truth-telling illustrations and writings. Her books, Am I There Yet? and her new gorgeous one, My Inner Sky, is all about those complicated places we find ourselves in relationships, our feeling of finding home, our health, the lives we thought we would have, the lives we ended up having. And uh, we have a beautiful conversation that's going to come out on my podcast, Everything Happens, next Tuesday. And Maria, I was just listening to it today and just having like private tears and oh loving you all over again. So I feel like I've just been talking to you for a long time right now. So what a dream you. to talk to you for a long time. That's such a dream. <laughs> I should listen to it too. Just the parts with you though. <laughs> no, no, no. I just have oh. in my ears. Also, please know that I had a very vivid nightmare last night that I openly screwed up this Instagram live. It was that I was incapable of managing the live function. So thank you for doing this. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we're nailing it. You're totally nailing it. <laughs> I thought maybe um, it might be a nice thing after I took so many notes about your uh, on your book about the kind of lessons we might learn about how to process our in-betweenness, our grief about the lives we thought we'd have and the ones we ended up having. And I thought maybe um, if it's okay, I wrote down three true things that you discovered and wondered if we could use that as a framework for our time together. Oh my gosh, you are, you are amazing. That is so okay. <laughs> so All, right. All right, true thing number one, I took away when I read your work and I see your art. No one told me I could lose so much so quickly. You know what that precipitous decline feels like. For people who don't know a bit about your story, how did you learn so much about losing so fast? Well, I, I kind of started my creative journey or really put it into gear, I guess. It's been, it's been a lifetime. Um, when I lost my father and a relationship at the same time, and I also had some cumbersome health issues and I was like losing <laughs> parts of my body. And um, I, I felt like I, that was a whole year of sitting in the midst of loss and trying to add to my life and figuring, figuring out who I was um, in a season of loss. And I kind of felt like I did that. I, <laughs> I created all these rituals to build up my muscles again and help me kind of walk out of my little burrow, my little apartment with um, a bit more grace and knowledge and all of that. And then um, as soon as that happened, as soon as I'd kind of gotten those tools, um, then I became really sick and yeah. um, was partially paralyzed uh, for a month. And it was a couple years of recovery from that. And it kind of felt at the time like, wait, I just did this. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, I learned that already. <laughs> these lessons, like I know yeah. I'm grateful already, universe. Like I already, like, wait a second. So it was like, wait, you're yeah. gonna take, like I'm gonna learn all this and then you're gonna take more from me? Yeah, like how does, right. how is that fair? And now of yeah. course, you know, I have a, a much broader perspective on it. <laughs> 
but uh yeah it's how it felt at, at the time just uh yeah just losing yes. things flying out of my life yes left and right. there's something about that lessons framework too that i know you and i have worked so hard to get out of but like there is that feeling that when you go through something awful and perhaps it's just our overwhelming desire to take suffering and pain and to, to transmute it and transform it into something else. But then it feels like, okay, well then I have something and now I don't have to, like, I don't have to relearn it. Thanks. And of course there's no math. Like there's no, I remember, um, you know, how people like right after you're sick, they tell you their real thing. And I remember running into a colleague at work who I just, you know, thought of as a, just a lovely, normal person. She's like, you know what? I, um, I, there's three other couples in my friend group and, um, they were there with me when I got cancer. They were there with me when I lost my first husband. And then when I got remarried and then when my husband died of another illness and now I have cancer again, she's like, Kate, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but like, this hasn't happened to anybody else in my group. Like, why do I have to be the one that it keeps happening to? And of course, like so much of what you've you're so good at accounting for is that space that's beyond lessons where you learn to stay there despite the fact that it's not always taking you where you want it to go. Yes, I, that's never challenging for me to stay in those, <laughs> those times. <laughs> yeah, it's so alluring. It's so alluring to want a lesson and meaning. And um, I'm a total butthead when I'm in the middle of those times and I'm like, where's the lesson? Where's the purpose? Where's the meaning? Like, come on. And yeah. to, to learn, um, to sit with the chaos and randomness of life and just sit in that, that is so hard. Yeah. It's yeah. so hard. Um, but that is, I, I was thinking like, when do you start? like do is there inherent lessons in in pain and that that's something that we've talked about I mean that's all I ever talk about um and I don't I don't think so I think pain is just pain um yeah. but I do think you're inevitably going to learn from anything you pay enough attention to and if you give your full attention to the pain or joy or boredom yeah. or silliness yeah you're yeah. going to find a lesson there because you're paying attention and there's, yeah. there's wisdom in whatever you pay attention to. So I don't think pain is it. <laughs> I'd yeah, much rather yeah, learn yeah. from joy and I have learned from joy, but, <laughs> um, but paying attention and part of that attention, right. is like sitting there and not, yeah. and not like forcing the lesson, like, okay, mm -hmm. where's, where's my wisdom? How can I instrumentalize this? Oh my gosh, Mari, if, if I could like magically absorb by uh, osmosis, one of your magical gifts, um, it would be your ability to, to like stay awake to the, to the crystalline details of the things around you. You have such a beautiful, delicate precision from that. And I just, I, I find it like you're just such a, I find it such a joy to be around. It's like your little detail battery and I just want to be close to it. So oh gosh, I'll just, thank you. <laughs> I'll just move in next door. Don't mind me. All right. Oh my um, gosh. True, <laughs> Dream life. <laughs> true thing. Number two, I was thinking about from your work and from my inner sky no one told me how strange it would be to live in the in-between and the not fully healed, not sick, the, the feeling that you can't unknow what you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm feeling that right now. I think we are collectively feeling that right now. It's so strange and it's strange because we don't have a lot of vocabulary for it. We don't have yeah. rituals for it. We don't have narratives for it. We don't, I have personally not read a whole lot of stories about sitting in the neither here nor there space. And uh, that's not something we like to talk about. We, we no. like our binaries. <laughs> we need to get somewhere. The journey has to have a destination. Yep. Otherwise, like, what do we know what our heroine is doing? Like, how's that oh movie going to end? Yeah, yeah. And it's, I think, uh, our most human times are when we don't know where we're going or when we're going to get there. <laughs> because it brings up, you know, the, our, our most, yeah, our most human, um, yeah 
this this little range of feelings that's so so human i don't think animals are like thinking that way like you know yeah yeah I know. I know. Just picturing squirrels being like trees again. Like, right, I we were right, do exactly. something different. Yeah. <laughs> they seem pretty at peace. I'm looking at my little cat just snoozing. She's not, she's not concerned. Um, and I think the, yeah, that feeling of like, oh, wait, I thought it was going to yeah. get there and then I'm yeah. here. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that brings up all these things that we think are unnatural, you know, like yeah, when we feel right. loneliness, we think, oh, I'm not supposed to feel that. Yeah. Or um, we feel envy. Oh my gosh, that's my personal sin. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> I'm such an expert at envy. And I always think that's, that's not me. That doesn't belong yeah. in my body. That doesn't belong to this experience, but it's so human. It's yeah. so human. Yeah. And when I sit with that, I'm like, oh my God, a sweet sweet yeah. little human soul hey, there like, you are <laughs> yeah there you are. a bundle of there contradictions all you're over again perfect. you little hypocrite <laughs> i say to myself <laughs> yes it turns out you're not you're not a perfect no. thing after all. No, and then I learn something, and then I unlearn it, and then I'll find notes to myself of a thought <laughs> I had already five times. I'm like, oh, I guess I really didn't lock that in. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I like to, something you said that I kept thinking about is, um, and maybe this is for true thing number three, we could say, no one ever told me that there's no going back, that we are changed in some way. And I, I remember you saying in our conversation, I just loved it so much. And honestly, I want, I want so much for you to illustrate it. Cause you described how you're like, sometimes worried that you're living your own B side. You're like, there's the A side for anyone who still remembers like tapes or records. Like you're just like, Oh crap. It's like, you're like the foil of yourself. Like there's a heroine. And then there's like the, the, like the frumpy dumpy version of the life you're supposed to have. And I, I love the idea yes. that like, when we go through something, we can feel overwhelmed by the idea that our, that like we were never our own best self, but the truth is we're just, we're just changed regardless. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's something I've, I've learned from your, uh, from one of your uh, guests um, who wrote the body keeps the score. I can't remember. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The self. Yeah. <laughs> the self right. is incredible. And um yeah, that you, when you go through something, um, I don't want to say necessarily traumatic, but earth shattering, is that, yeah. is that a lesser word? Um, something that, that kind of warps your way of seeing things and seeing yourself and seeing your life. I think you get so homesick that you can't help but think there's got to be another version of myself. Yeah. Like my true... Yeah. My true self is living somewhere else. My true yes. self is married to that guy and we're celebrating something. And my true self is not in this pandemic. This whole year, I felt like, you know, I would look as we all did at our at the calendar, you know, that we, mm -hmm. we had like concerts and meetings and stuff that, that are never, never happened. And you kind of think that's my true self. <laughs> like mm -hmm. side A is living this life. And this is the like, this is the kind of bizarro version that didn't quite make the yeah. like factory cut. Like I, there's something like a little wrong and, and I'm still over here while like my true self is living her best life. And, um, and that like that disconnect, um, I think is, is like this feeling of exile. I mean, it's, it's homeland -lessness. It's like, where is my home? And, I think the becoming like a new person after that is creating mm -hmm. a new home within yourself, which is really mm -hmm. hard. And then at one point you're like, Oh, I recognize this furniture. Like mm -hmm. I, I feel at home in my own body. But I mean, for me, for various, various things I've gone through that, that can take so long. It can take years where you, where you don't really feel like you're at home in your own self. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And since we've been stuck so long in this in-between and then the in-between became permanent and then, right. you know, and then right. there we were. Uh, I, I tend to like, um, I think, I think, I think we're very similar in this. Like when I feel stuck, I try to press the fast forward button as like a, as a trauma response to almost dying. Mm -hmm. Right. Is to be like, Oh, I got to speed this up. I got to squeeze this in. I've got to, and like one of the great things I, I consistently learned from you, honestly, Marie, is the, like the ability to like, 
if I could do it, what I would choose is to slow down for just a sec and to stay awake. Like just to stay mm -hmm. awake, like yes, awake to the pain, but also awake to the details that just as you're describing this kind of economy of attention that takes us, that takes us deeper into the place where we didn't necessarily choose, but here we are. Here we are. What are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. 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 Have you figured it out? How to? How yeah, to yeah. It's so weird. I figured it out last week. So I'm really glad that we're having this conversation because I no, I, I just I, um, I think that's partly why I love so much um, talking with people like you who just who understand liminality, like who don't make me feel like I'm in exile just because I don't belong where I did. And uh you you're so good at that kind of ministry of hospitality hun you really are like hey look at us oh. here we are <laughs> we live here so super weird <laughs> yeah 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 and i feel you know of course i miss like the people you know i miss like having a healthy un you know an undisputably healthy body and i miss i miss restaurants and i miss you know but like but just to find enough beauty here to sustain us, that does feel like that's the work of right now. And don't you think missing, I think a lot about missing, which also feels like something that's kind of a natural. It's like, oh, oh no, I don't want to miss something. Like that means that I have to do something about it. Like I have to call yeah. him, I have to call him or I have yeah. to move or whatever. And missing, yeah. I actually find to be such a like creatively fertile place and very like, mm -hmm fertile for empathy and all of these things that I want to cultivate in myself. And I think sometimes the missing is like a way to pay attention. It's like, oh, what's what's going on in myself and actually paying attention to that missing as opposed to, you know, trying to I hate I hate when people use gratitude as an antidote to, to like a hard <laughs> feeling. It's like, I can have both. Like, yeah, yeah, being yeah. grateful doesn't mean I'm not sad. Like, what no. is that? Don't Why? make me be grateful for the earth plague, you know? I, don't make I, me, don't make me do it. Don't, don't <laughs> force that on me, you little wall calendar. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> so I like, yeah, when I'm missing something, it doesn't help for me to say, oh, well, I'm just so grateful for what I have. And a lot of times that like compares my suffering to others, which I mm -hmm. don't want to do ever. So um, yeah, to like recognize that missing is, ooh, that's a part of me and that's, yeah. that's like, it's achy, but yeah. I mean, Gosh, yeah. what a great place to begin creating from and, yeah. and uh, wondering yeah. from. And it shows us that we still hunger for more, which I just, has got yeah. to just be being alive, right? Like, just being Long. horribly, yeah. wonderfully yeah. alive again. <laughs> oh, here we are again, remembering that we're, we exist. <laughs> I love yep. it. Yep. Talking with you makes me feel like we did a full circle on the on the record player and then we're like and then we came back again and be like, yep, and here we are. Mari, thank you so much for doing this with me. I hope everyone buys my inner sky. It is so beautiful and my very, very, very favorite essay I have ever read about um about missing somebody, like missing a romantic relationship. I hope everyone reads that essay and understands that like that 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 ache of love that keeps us that keeps us alert and awake and hungry for for more so thank you so much for doing with this with me i will uh i will do this anytime any place so oh my gosh we succeeded we're experts <laughs> now kate i'm obsessed with you i love your wisdom thank you for being my teacher and um <laughs> i appreciate you so much thanks for having me Mwah. let's do this again All right. take care my darling <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.